The states have figured out. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good day, good day I say, wherever you are in the world, what's up? It is Brendan Isaiah Bankston coming to you live. What's up everybody? Yeah man, you were first. <laughs> uh, it has been a little while. It's been quite quite a while. I think it's been uh, like about a month and a half or something like that. I don't know. It's so much is going on in the world. So, um, yeah. Hope everybody's doing well. Today, we are going to chat. Hello. We are going to just kind of have a little work session today. Um, kind of a kickback. Let's uh, explore some things in 2021. Let's uh, work on the current project. Um, maybe we can I can cover some of some of the stuff that I did for the beta images uh, for the samurai that I did. Um, but yeah, this is the this is the current. The current project that um, I'm working on. Hopefully, it doesn't crash right now. But uh, this is a personal project that um, we've been working on here on my stream on Pixo, pretty much exclusively here on my my channel. So if you'd like to, you can always go back and watch some of the beginning streams and see how we got here. Um, if you go to zbrushlive.com. And uh, find my artist page, which is Brendan Isaiah Bankston. I do have a YouTube channel. It's also under Brendan Isaiah Bankston. Um, and uh, you can find the previous streams there on how I did kind of all this and how we kind of approached everything, blocked it all out. Brendan Isaiah Bankston. <laughs> like that? Uh, yeah. So uh, there's also other amazing artists on that channel. Um, so if you would like to see other amazing stuffs, definitely go check those guys and gals out. Awesome stuff. Pro, what's up, man? Uh, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. Launched a game in, uh, in quarantine. Not bad. I'd, I'd say that was a, a pretty eventful last couple of years <laughs> or, or since March. Um, what software do I use for workflow for games? Uh, there's there's lots of different software. So my basic pipeline goes. Um, I usually use ZBrush for absolutely. You can ask questions. So this is it's a little bit more of uh, happy to answer questions and kind of fireside chat with um, uh, you know video game character art specific video game industry stuff. Uh, we'll keep it to kind of that. Um, but uh, for my pipeline, I, I typically start in ZBrush. So I'll do my blockout in ZBrush. I do all my high-res stuff in ZBrush. Uh, and then from there, if I'm doing personal work, I'll take it over to... I've been using Modo a lot uh, lately for my Retopo and UVing. But um, I've been using... Actually, the last character that I did um, was almost entirely in ZBrush for UVs and Retopo as well. So more and more stuff to, uh, to do on that in uh, ZBrush. And then from there, uh, I usually do my texturing and stuff in um, Substance Painter. 
and then I do my final renders and stuff in Marmoset Toolbag. When you finish launching a game, do you move on to the next game, or do you continue making DLC for the game? It really depends, comics. Um, it depends on what uh, all the upper echelon want to do, and what the um, the powers to be are are uh, wanting. So, uh, let's see. Last time we were having some issues with the background, so. What I did was I took some of the other assets that I did for the God of War project that I was working on and just brought them in. I think it, it already does uh, about a million times better for the background. So uh, This texturing skin, um, so the body, I got uh, the base body from 3D Scan Store, um, which had a base texture on it already. And that was... Um, brought that in in to Substance Painter, brought the, the base body into Substance Painter, and then just drew in um, all the black stuff, all these stuffs. And then uh, brought it back into the texture map. The texture map, there you go. So there's a, there's a texture. Yeah, I wish you'd be peeled too. Um, but the um, the Morphe V with the bump now um, and being able to kind of change the uh, UVs around while in uh, while it's morphed is is pretty awesome. I don't know about you. Um, hey, Costa, Costia. Oh, you know what? Um, I got to press send on this thing. Yeah, it, def it definitely helps. Um, and the the new Z remesher is amazing. Um, actually, you know what I'll do? Um, let's. I want to go over with you guys real quick the stuff that I did on the. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Um, the ZBrush beta, and then we can cover some of the uh, dynamic subdivision and uh, poly, micro poly stuff. Let me, let me see if I can find that guy real quick. Samurai 2, I think. It does. Yeah, the Zero ZBrush Auto Retopper is getting better and better with every release, for sure. Alright, so this was the, um, the ZBrush beta image that I did. And all of this, so like uh, all of this, the whole hat is all micro poly. Uh, so if we look at sub dynamic subdivision, all right? So basically, you just took a um, I took a base body and a base head, sculpted up the the shapes a, a bit, sculpted up some hair, and then with this guy, uh, he's just the hat's just micro poly. So if I turn that off. That's literally all it is. Wait. What? Wait, hold on. What? No way, bro. No way. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, this has MicroPoly. It's really, really easy. And then if you want to, if you want to change it, you just grab a different MicroPoly. This one is. Oh God, where is it? That's this one here. No, weave six. Weave six. There it is. Uh, so if I want to change it, you know, I can change it to whatever. It's all hacks, bro. It's all hacks. I can change it to whatever I want to. And then um, there's a smoothness on it, which gets rid of the that. <laughs> so awesome. I love it. Uh, so then I just, I made um, that guy, and I made this little under piece, and then this little piece. So that's literally what the hat is right there. I mean, you can see how quickly, um, if if you just grab like a cone, and then just take the top off of it, and then change it around a little bit, donezo. Change back. There we go. Um, similar to this. Oops. 
Not that one. This one. Uh, so this one is literally just that. It's like one-sided. Uh, basically, what I did is I took um, I took the skin that was underneath, just grabbed a um, a mask, masked it out, re re z remeshed it real quick, and then um, added a micro poly to it. And that's how I came up with that. Super quick and super easy. All right. I wasn't worried about um, the overall. It was really just kind of for presenting an image, uh, for presenting a render. And the render was something like this. All right. So I didn't have to worry about the back seam. I didn't have to worry about the front seam down here. It was really... Um, no, this one is not game ready. This was, this was just a rendered for an image. Or constructed for an image but you can see quickly like um, so this one was just this piece right and then it's literally again just took a um, a mask and masked out a section of the base body extracted it z remeshed it and then um, added a thickness right I think got a thickness yeah a thickness of 0 0.01 and then just added a micro poly the fit and weld and then if you want to you can apply this to actual geo which is pretty awesome so then I did the same thing for that one and then I just created a, a quick sword a sword which you don't really need a lot of detail for so yeah, that one was that one was fun I was gonna do something like full body um, but never really had time to, to kind of finish everything. So, so that's what I'm going to do right now is, um, I'm going to leave this as a, like an undercloth, and then we're going to, um, extract a new piece that's pretty much right over this and then, um, create some micro poly over it. So we're going to start adding more detail and stuff. So, let's do that. Let's grab this Mad Bama Jamma. Okay, let's grab... So yeah, uh, fireside style chat. So if you guys have questions, you're more than welcome to ask away while I turn the air conditioning on, because it's hot in here. just upgraded to iOS 14 and now everything on my <laughs> on my little uh, desktop on my phone is mixed up and I can't find anything oh. of course there it is I found it uh, do I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring? Uh, I don't at this point. Um, I did for quite a while, but I, I'm so busy with work right now. Um, I'm working on uh, the Avengers. Oh yeah, so yeah, last last month, uh, actually two weeks ago, week and a half, uh, we launched Marvel's Avengers. That was a fun project to work on. Give me a second, I'm going to close my window here. Mr. Streamer, can you retopo something simple in ZBrush? Uh, sure, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm going to do right now. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this new piece. All right, so let's say that this is my under un, under piece. All right, and it's it's uh, this is Dynamesh. All right, it's kind of all herky-jerky and gross. So typically what I'll do is I'll leave the, the under mesh and uh, this is this is actually the retopoed piece, but I'll do it again real quick for you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to what do I want to do? How do I want to do this? So I want to leave the piece this piece underneath. Let's 
So there's a couple things I can do. You, typically what I'll do is um, I'll just mask out a portion here. I don't I don't really care how uh, so um, I'm gonna hit control and then I'm gonna turn on back face mask for my mask so that I don't accidentally pick up anything back here like that. So now if we oops if I mask it should not it's not supposed to pick up anything. Oh that's why. Ha 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 turn on back face mask for this one. There we go. So now, there we go. It doesn't pick up anything back there. So when I hold down um, control to switch to my mask, you can see it masking here, um, then I can turn on my back face mask. The back face mask is in brush uh, auto masking back face mask. So I use that quite a bit. Uh, if you're interested in um, picking up my UI, you're welcome to. It's just on my website, which is Bankston Designs. So it's just my last name, B-E-N-G-T-S-O-N, designs.com. And it's right there on the front page. You can find a link to my Gumroad and or Cube Brush store. So I'm just gonna grab all this front stuff. So why am I using masking? Um, I am using masking because, I'll show you in a second. So then what I can do is, um, I can go to group masked and this is, um, this is polygroup. So, uh, just to give you a quick rundown, um, on the side here is typically, uh, just sub, uh, stuff from the tool menu that I use. So sub tools, um, geometry stuff, uh, polygroup stuff. No, sorry, this is geometry stuff. Polygroup, um, morph targets, masking, uh, and UVs. So then what I typically do is I'll just do group masked. And what that'll do is that it'll, that will create a polygroup for what I have masked. So then I can just hide that split hidden and because each single subtool has its own uh, history I could just undo that real quick there we go and then now I can I actually have this split out so I've I've kept this original piece but then I've just selected and and uh, pulled out that which I got a little bit of hole there I think it's okay. I could just go and do it again, which I think I'll do. Just pull that hole there. Okay, then we'll do it again. Group mast. Yeah, I don't really care about that stuff at the point at this point, so we'll do split hidden. Undo that. Okay, now go grab to this one. All right. Um, it's got a hole there. That's not really what I want. I do want that closed. Let's go back one more time. And then what I could do is actually, if I do group masked before I split it, Really what I should do is just look at it real quick. Um, I don't care too much about those. I'll just delete those. I just want one major piece. Okay, that's fine. So that's good. We'll do split hidden. I just want to delete these other two real quick. So we'll go delete. That's fine. And delete. So grab this one. Undo that guy. Cool. Now we got this guy. All right, so now I got this piece. Typically what then I'll do is um, I'll just do a quick polish by groups and that's in uh, deformation polish by groups. And what that does is it cleans up the edges just a little bit. So that's before and then polish by groups. 
and it just kind of rounds that out a little bit. What it does is it helps prep for a more clean uh, zero mesh. So then we'll go down to Geo, Zero Mesher. We'll do, uh, let's say 10,000 for now. I typically like 20 by 20 on adaptive size and curve strength. Then I'll just do a quick Zero Mesh. Okay, there's a decent zero mesh. So uh, now I've got a little bit of wavies in here, so then maybe I'll just do another quick polish by groups, and that starts cleaning up those edges really nice. Right, look at that. Super easy and super quick. And then maybe um, I'll do one more as same here. Okay. So that topology looks pretty good. It, it's a little bit dense, um, so I'm gonna do half. And then I'll usually just step down by half now, as I go. I don't mind the little wobblies in here, that's okay. It feels a little bit more natural. All right, so what does that look like? Cool. Now we got something that has decent topology that's kind of sitting here. Now what I want it to do is I want it to sit kind of on top of uh, this black cloth. So there's a couple things I could do. I can go in by hand and just kind of move things around by hand. But I don't like doing that, especially if I could just do like a one click. So I'm going to go into um, Z Modeler real quick and I'm just going to Q Mesh. Oh, there's more stuff. Uh, it's so weird because Q Mesh is always up here. It's so weird, it's down here now. Anyway, so uh, Q Mesh, uh, we'll do Polygroup All. And then what I'm going to do is, um, so if I just do a regular Q mesh, that's going to give me thickness, right? But I'm going to use the Alt or the Shift version, and what that does is it just pulls pulls it out or pushes it in based on all of the normal uh, vertex normals or poly, uh, sorry, poly normals, right? So if I just do it regularly, it's doing this. Right, and basically what it's doing is, if I hold down shift while I do this, it's doing the same thing, but it's just, it's not making any other geo. So I use that all the time just to kind of pull it out further a little bit than what it was already sitting on. And then I could just go in real quick and clean up any, boop, like that. All right, so now this, this feels pretty good. I like that feels pretty awesome now uh, let's let's cut the geo a little bit more oh yeah I forgot to take care of these little guys so let's before we get too far down this rabbit hole um, to clean up any of these little kind of islandy floaty guys I'll just do auto groups for uh, poly group and then I'll just hide everything except for this main group and then just delete it. Easy peasy. So then now if we do half, it won't take those little those little dudes into consideration. Which is fine. So we just cut up a half again, maybe one more time. It feels okay. So the idea here is that I want even geo because I'm gonna use Okay, those rocks are getting in the way. Uh, now we're going to go down to s dynamic subdivision, turn on dynamic subdivision, uh, micro poly on, and we're going to use that. All right, let's turn the scale up. fit. Want to fit, yes. Okay, so I want the rings a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to need to do is pull this a little bit lower. Maybe by half again. 
So I just need just some basic geo. What's awesome is that um, now you can, you know, you can get this geo really quickly and really um, efficiently just by doing something like this. All right, so now if I go back to dynamic subdivision, turn that on. Now we have some free, basically free ring mail. Uh, so let's turn that off for a second. Whoa, that was weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some of this geo. You guys still there? I don't know if my... chat died or not. Still here. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Sometimes the, the chat, the restream, has some issues, so every once in a while, uh, if everybody's just mesmerized, that's totally fine. Just want to make sure that the chat's still watching, the chat's still working. All right, so then now I can just kind of move this stuff around a little bit, right? And then I have a, I have a um, dynamic subdivision on and off tied to shift to D for me. So if you look here, it's shift D down there at the bottom. Shift D. So if you want to assign a hotkey, what you can do is uh, find the key that you want, do Control Alt and click. So I'm going to do Control Alt and click, and then watch up here. All right, Control Alt click, and it says press any combination to assign the hotkey. So I like Shift D, because um, that way I can turn it on and off really quickly. Just learning. Good. Soak it up. Um, and when I'm moving stuff around kind of in, in large chunks, I always do micro movements. I didn't, I didn't kind of learn this for, for quite a while, but one of the things, um, the pro tip, is uh, micro movements. So if you just take and move like this, it typically does a lot more stretching than you want it to. And this is kind of just in general when you're using the move tool in here. But if you use kind of these micro movements like this, um, things don't get stretched out as much because you're pulling by a different amount in different areas as you're kind of moving around. So it helps to just do kind of like these little micro movements Took me a long time to figure that one out. <laughs> uh, quite a bit. Uh, I mean, it will make all of this into geo. That's why I'm I'm not too worried about what the base geo is at the moment. It's really more about uh, you know, what this geo looks like. And I don't want to want to stretch it around too much. Uh, a line. There we go. Let's do a line. There we go. Yes. Yes. And just like that, we can have oops, chainmail. And then what we could do is let's go to material and let's turn on gold. Switch over my standard brush real quick, turn on material, hit fill object, and then let's go back, and then boom. Oh, yeah, buddy. Oh, it's so good. It's so good and so easy. Now let's do is kick up a quick render and see if we can get any rid of any of those. See what it really looks like. You know, the other thing we could do is instead of just a large sheet like this, we could just do strips. Strips might be cool. And then what it will do is it kind of mimic this. Hey, okay. How do you use it for games after this? Uh, what I would do is I would create, I would create this geo. Um, I would convert it to geo. 
And then what I would do is um, I would just bake this down, right? So I, I what I would do is this would be this would be my um, the actual geo, right? And then you can just add UVs, right? So let's let's UV it real quick. The UV master. Uh, let's just do a quick unwrap, and then we'll morph UV. See what that looks like. Uh, it's pretty cool. Let me turn bump off. All right, that's pretty good right there. All right, so then what I would do is I would take that, I would take this guy, and I would take. Uh, so I would duplicate the whole thing, export this guy as an OBJ, and then I would turn this back on hit apply so this is actually geo so now they're staying in the same spot right so if this is your high res then you can bake all that info down into your normal uh, the thing that you would have to consider is uh, finding a way to bake the alpha out of this right so like um, what you could do is you could fill it with black and then uh, bake the vertex paint out and then that could be your alpha right so then your alpha and your normal uh, line up and then um, you know you could even use a free roughness map so that's how it, that's how I would utilize uh, micro mesh is whatever I'm building I'm building it in mind of I'm going to bake all this down into uh, geo and apply the um, Micro mesh. I mean, uh, apply the alpha to it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, it's it, it's basically this is the same way you would that would you would do hair, hair cards, right? So like, let's say these instead of micro mesh, these are all your splines for your hair card, right? And then this is your hair card, right? You just bake all that stuff down to your flat card. And then you bake the alpha out as well. So you bake the the diffuse. You bake the, uh, bake the alpha, which is the most important part. And then you bake your normal and AO if you want. Um, and then in the engine you apply the the uh, alpha. And then that just renders that little spot. So that's what I would do. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's why we're here, bro. Share the knowledge dump. And on that note, I need some water. The interesting thing is that <clears throat> it, it completely, it should completely change your mindset uh, during construction of what your output's going to be, you know? If I'm just doing this for a render, um, you know the stuff that I would be doing is it would be different, right? But I'm doing this for oh hearts in that kid. Look, she's this mean demon lady with a bunch of hearts. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, no problem. Man. There you go. That's my YouTube channel if you'd like it. My name is a little bit hard to spell, so copy and paste is your friend. It's your friend, man. Uh, if you'd like to, so I have um, a bunch of playlists and stuff there. Um, there's a, a huge breakdown I did of my full pipeline on the drone asset. Um, there's also some interviews and stuff that I did with uh, some industry peoples. Some industry peeps. All right. Um, so let's play. Let's play. Let's play. What else we got? Um, what about these things? Oh, that one's cool. I like that one. So this is why you have to be careful with, with the stretching, because this stuff may kind of get a little... You have to futz with it a little bit. Um, 
let's let's just do one and then you I think you can rotate Yeah, exactly. It, it's really based on how well your geo set up, right? So if we look at my geo in here, it's it's kind of wonky, right? So what you could do is you could just do a, like a polish by groups. Um, it will change the outside, but typically it will even everything out a little bit, right? So now, now when I do it, it'll be a little bit better. What else we got? And then, but now I could just grab my move brush and just pull this stuff back out. It also depends on, um, you know, what what pattern that you're using. You know, if you're using something like this, then it may be okay if there's stretching in there. Figure out what works for you, man. You know? You gotta figure out what, what works for you in this life. You know? Oh. I haven't had my coffee yet. Oh, my second cup, sorry. I haven't had my second cup of coffee. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can start just playing with this stuff for days. <laughs> it's so awesome. Yeah, they're um, the. I was actually testing the, the cloth on on this as well it could be a little bit i mean to be all uh, all all honest um the dynamics can be a little funky so uh, it, you know it's just with the same thing with any uh dynamic system is that you, you just kind of you have to be don't go crazy you know if you go crazy with the dynamics um it may take kind of forever yeah and it's I, I would say if you want to uh, start playing with the dynamics and stuff, just just take a little bit of time and kind of get used to how it how it works. Um, I mean, even with this micro poly stuff, it's it takes a little kind of getting used to. But then again, you know, you can just you don't have to sit here and and futz with the dynamic resolution. You could just get it to a place that feels fairly good and then you just apply it and then uh, tweak the actual geo you know it's another good interesting way to uh, create geo as well you know like a really comp more complicated geo setup So that's one one thing that we could do. So let's try something else now. All right. So we'll go we'll go, we'll go over this again. Maybe we'll try it on this side. All right. So let's grab this one. Where are we at this one? Okay, that's fine. We'll take a look at it. It is Dynamesh, which is good. Let's make it all one. I still have my back face mask on for my brush. So then. I'm just gonna paint. Uh, instead, I'm going to paint strips. So maybe we'll just have like one there, one there, and one there. Or we could do those two to start. Turn that on. Uh, so one of the other shortcuts that I use quite a bit is instead of this uh, group mast, if you have something grouped and you do uh, control W which is um, which is assign polygroup uh, it will assign it to when you have masked 
All right, so that would do that. We'll do split hidden. We'll undo this one. Uh, and we'll just keep that. We'll keep those just in case. All right, so then we take this. Uh, we do a little polish by groups. We do a little geo. We do Z remesher. Um, uh, let's say a thousand to start. And we'll do, say, 20 by 20. See your mesh. Cool. And then we'll do polish by groups. Love polish by groups. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to. I'm going to get rid of those guys. those guys basically I just want strips like that so I'm gonna get rid of any kind of funkiness any kind of funky comedina up here and there all right so let's do delete hidden we'll do uh, same zero mesh that should give me clean geo there we go pause for groups um, if you don't want it to uh, let me just do like a or something like that. Nope, don't like that. Uh, if you don't want it to affect the corners, typically what I'll do is I'll just mask the corners real quick. Just takes a half a second. Mask that corner, that corner, that corner, that corner, that corner, that corner. Then we'll do another polish by groups. And that will keep those corners. Then what you can do is you can just unmask that if you want. I do that quite a bit. Um, let's do half. I'm going to undo that, and then I'm going to use Alt Z Remesh to try the other. Uh, when you hit Alt, when you hold that Alt and hit Z Remesh, it will actually use the secondary algorithm. So sometimes if you don't like what it's giving you, um, you can use, let's do same. Try to get rid of that little shenanigans there. Anyways, if you use Alt, then it will give you the secondary algorithm. So if you don't like how it kind of set everything up for you at first, then you can use the alternate one, which I use pretty. I, I use quite a bit if I don't like the way that things are kind of lining up. So we'll do same, same Z's. If I really don't want to do it, I'll just go into Z Z modeler real quick. Let's go into point. We'll do slide, and then I'll just slide this over. Force it. So I want to do it. Force it. Cool. Got some strips now. Why is it doing that? I don't know. You know what? Screw you. Delete hidden. There we go. Yeah, it must have been something. Yeah, look at that. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Same Z's. Crash. Come on, baby. Give me a save on crash. Come on, save on. Thank you. Save on crash is amazing. You shop at save on? I shop at save on all the time. Pick up some crashes here and there. Save on crash. <laughs> uh, we'll do it. We're going to do it. Recovery. 
Recovery. You guys remember that um, those Ricola commercials? Whenever I do recovery, I always think about that. Recovery. Question, question, anybody? Question, 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 anybody? Question. You see my previous, uh, my previous projects here, huh? You're like, oh, dude, were you working on a Batman? Wait, what? <clears throat> Wait, what? How frequently do you use Zebra Mesh Guides brush? Uh, hardly ever, actually. Very, very rarely. I could just do it that way, which may be easier. This is fine. We're fine. How do you go about retopping a character for games if it has a lot of different parts like armor and etc.? Um, I can actually have a screenshot if you want to see. Um, I, no, it's okay. Uh, let Let's say, how do I go? I mean, it's really it's it's really dependent on the project. Um, you know, let's say if I was going to, this is going to crash again on me. He does. He really doesn't like move. Not liking the move. Um, see, it really, it really depends on the project. Um, so in this particular case, you know, like you would take pieces of armor. So if I was going to retopo like this, uh, this hand, I would think about how I want to, um, how I want the actual model to work, uh, in the game, right? Um, there's no, there's no one way. There's no one way to retopo. Um, it really depends on the model. Uh, you know, it, it it also depends heavily on the style uh, that you're going for, right? If it's a realistic style, then you may um, you may end up with more polys, right? So it makes uh, the work a little bit more during retopo, uh, but um, let's see if this is going to work at all. There we go. Um, one second. Hold on. Turning the AC on, but my wife keeps turning it off. Come on, man. Um, all right. Let's see if we just do something else to this guy. Greetings from Guam. Greetings from Peru. Hey, what's up, guys? All right. Let's do dynamic subdivision. Let's delete hidden. Oh, that's why. There we go. Let's turn on micropoly. And then let's do that. Yeah, that micropoly is really small. Let's try, I don't know, maybe that one. There we go. 
So you could do strips. And I'm, I'm thinking that maybe we could just do one poly strips. So let's do Let's just get rid of some of these. Let's see if that'll work. Been out of the sculpting scene for months. Welcome back. <laughs> Is that a new brush? Uh, are you up to date on ZBrush 2021? Maybe we'll just try one set of strips here. See what that gives us. So here's, you see the difference right away, right? Which is cool, because like this can, you know, it doesn't have to follow this. You can set it up initially. Um, and then what you can do is and we'll just turn that actually what we'll do is let's do auto groups and we're just going to split that off we'll split hidden there we go now we just got this guy and now we can just, you know, maybe this actually comes like that. Then maybe, maybe it actually comes from under here. Aha, uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Now let's get daring. Ready? Are you ready for this? So let's do this. Let's mask that. We're going to try it on the fly, but not before we save it. <laughs> let's save this guy first. Thank you. Uh, tw no, not uh, 2020.1, but did you download 2021? 2021 is where all the latest awesomeness is. So the stuff that I'm working on here is actually in uh, 2021. It's new to 2021. It's in dynamic subdivision. It's called uh, MicroPoly. So you can assign... Uh, it's basically like nano mesh, but it's a little bit uh, friendlier. So what I can do is I can assign a, a, nano, a nano mesh to it, like that. So basically, what it's doing is it's it's filling each one of those um, squares with that, or that, or that. That. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, so what we're gonna do is we are going to try this. Let's try dynamics. Pull that over there. Um. So we're going to do it not on brushed. We're going to leave gravity on, leave the mask off. Iterations are up. Gravity is down a little. Um, we are going to hit collision volume. I think that's what we do. Yes. We'll wait for that. I'm going to pull this out of that mesh real quick. Okay, so we're going to mask off this guy. 
Oh, 2021.1.1.1. Uh, run sim. Okay, so why did it do that? It's because the inflate is way up. So let's undo that. Let's turn the inflate, and then now we run simulation. Okay. All right. Mask that. Oh, thanks, bad bud. All right, there we go. Now we run the simulation. What it does is it basically all of your points, right? So it's not the inside, it's your vertexes. The vertexes are now sitting just on the upside. Whatever that is, right? So now we have we have that. And then what I'll do is I'll just pull this stuff out real quick. Right, so now it's conforming to that really quickly and really easily. So now if I do dynamic subdivision, then that little strip is sitting there. Okay, let's go to gold fill material. Okay, cool. Then let's go back. There we go. So that's other things that you can do as well. Right? It adds really a lot of details really quickly. Right, so let now now let's take this idea and run a little bit further with it. Right, so let's let's have this one start from up here and roll maybe down and over these guys. Let's see what that feels like. And really all I need to do is place, here we do this. So we'll unmask that. We'll do, uh, this one is go to unmasked mesh center. So that will snap it to there, which is cool. So now, clear the mask. And then we'll just place it from here. Right, so we'll just take this, rotate that. I just want it on the outside of the geo. Fifty-five million? Oh, dude, that's nothing. Uh, my typical high res uh, rolls around. I don't know, five hundred million, something like that. That's my typical high res model. It's about 5 million. All right, so yeah, maybe maybe we'll just have it start from there. Okay, so, you know, it's, I, I don't really care what this looks like uh, for the Geo and how it's like out here, because Dynamics is just going to smack it um, onto the surface there. So the only thing I'm really worried about is just masking that, and then we'll go run simulation. Okay, so what I do want to do is I want the firmness up a little bit. Iterations are up. Let's try that. Cool. And now it's now it's doing that. So you can see really quickly how how quick and easy you can just, you know, by, by knowing what does what, um, 
you know, you can start using these new tools to to really do some cool stuff. Alright, so let's turn the dynamic back off and then we'll roll once again. Turn the dynamic back on. You can even use this for, you know, when you want to conform geo to a surface. Um, I, I, I probably will do this quite a bit now. Um, you know, let's say, let's say you wanted to have, um, you know, a piece of cloth roll over, you know, over some of this and kind of really conform to it. it one of the big things is like, well, okay, well, how do you, how do you create that? Um, typically before what I would do is I would use, um, you know, this same process that we did for this one, where you would extract Z remesh um, from the thing that's underneath it. So before I would have just said, okay, if I wanted something to kind of like roll across this surface, really, really um, very specifically across that surface, instead of having to go in and move everything, um, you know, by hand, what I could do is uh, just grab, let's actually just do it instead of saying it. All right, so let's say what I wanted to do was, let's append a cube. Just want some geo first. So grab this one. Um, I'm just looking for a strip of geo. So there's a couple ways I could do it, but right now what I'm gonna do is just do a Q cube. All right, that's gonna give me that. I just want to, well, I could have just done a plane. I guess that would have worked too. Whatever. Uh, so let's delete hidden. We'll do that. And we'll go into uh, Z modeler and we'll do insert multi edge loops. And I can just add a bunch of geo that way. So now I just got some geo on a strip. All right, and then we just kind of get that into place. All right, maybe maybe I just want to position just this piece here. All right, so maybe I can just do. just position it from there right because so now I know that um, I'm going to use the simulation to kind of to ad adhere this to that surface okay that sounds good sure Let's mask that, and then we'll just run the simulation. And now I have a strip of geo that adheres to that. Super quick, super easy. I love new tools. <laughs> I love new tools, it's so awesome. All right, so you get that idea. Huge time saver, big, big time saver. But it's about knowing like how those tools work um, and then how to use them, right? All right, uh, let's see, what are we gonna work on now? Um, I thought we could probably work on
so I don't need this dude anymore. Oops. Oof, that was scary. And that's the other awesome thing too, is that you don't need to do a bunch of like splitting and stuff and, and like editing the mesh underneath. Um, one of the big things is uh, that this helps with this this process instead of um, the mask assign uh, polygroup and extract is that if the the base mesh that you're pulling from has subdivisions or or layers um, then you basically have to dupe it off kill the layers kill the subdivisions and then uh, do the mask and extract uh, that's that is uh, micro poly yeah these are micro poly these guys are done by hand all those guys done by hand Um, the other thing I was thinking of doing was doing a quick, uh, like a, a different type of jewelry. So like beads. Um, so maybe we can go over how to create a, uh, curve brush with different beads and stuff in it. I think maybe that's what we'll do. So I'd like to do something besides just this kind of the same loop, the same style. I'd like to try to do some different thing, thingamajigs. So let's let's play around with some shapes. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff we could do. All right, let's do this. All right, so we're gonna append. Oh yeah, all right, cool, I got an idea. All right, uh, let's go all the way down to the bottom. All right, so this is just a plane, right? Uh, let's. Let's actually do a Q cube. You can turn anything into a Q cube, basically. Um, so let's just go down to zero. Let's do a Q cube. Thanks, bad bud. Appreciate it, man. Um, this, uh, for me, it was this project is a. It's less of a video game pipeline production project and more a character concept for video game project. Um, typically, as a, as a character artist in the video game industry, you, you usually get your concepts from the concept design team, um, which means that you don't really have a whole lot of breadth to do your own designs. Um, and that's awesome and kind of stinks at the same time. Um, it's great if you uh, are not the best designer and you're more of really good at technical and like being able to faithfully recreate uh, somebody's uh, 2D design or, or 3D for that matter. So with some concept artists these days. Um, but in this particular one, uh, I really wanted to work on my concept design. So this is an original concept. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, so here's what we're going to do. All right, so the, the beauty of live streaming is you get to experience like on the fly creativity and decision making uh, while you're watching somebody, you know. So here's here's what I'm going to think out loud. So I want to create different shapes. Um, let me, let me just show you real quick. So uh, the way to create a uh, tri-part, uh, 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 what the fuck yeah, do you call it? Multi-mesh, um, create a multi-mesh brush. Typically you would have to use three parts like this, right? And then what it would do is on the curve that you create, this would, this piece, whatever this polygroup is, is your beginning point. Whatever this polygroup is, is your all your internal stuff. So like if you have a full curve, then the orange is just this first part down here. A full curve is green, and then your purple part up here. So it's a tripart 
brush. So that's the idea with um, with the try. So what I would like to do is uh, so the problem with this is that you're kind of stuck with whatever is in this green um, as the majority of your uh, curve. And what I mean by that, let me show you an example here real quick. Most of you guys probably already know this, but in case there's some peoples here that are new or relatively new, we'll just take a look at this guy. All right. So this is a tripart brush. All right. So this this piece right here is your orange piece down there. These two pieces together are your green and then this one is your purple, right right down here. So what it does is when you have this brush, let's make it a little bit bigger. Right, so it's saying, okay, my green, well this is, the colors are different, but this piece is this piece. All of these pieces are your green, and this orange is this orange, right? So it's great if you want to set it up like this. The problem is, is that if you want to have different pieces in this green, um, then it's a little bit of, of an issue. So I think there's a different way to do it. I know there's a different way. I'm going to try it. We're going to try it live. So instead of the idea of having a tripart brush, we're going to create a bunch of insert pieces into one insert mesh brush. And then we're going to use um, the, uh, da, 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 da. I think it's in stroke, or stroke, stroke curve, curve step, curve functions. Nope, not there. This is why, not, that's not material, not an alpha. why live is so awesome You're like wait how do you how did you do that there's a random filter oh uh, yeah once you do it you have variations so uh, if you all right let's just do it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna create some some interesting thing for whatever's gonna live in here so instead of just saying oh I'm just gonna create a sphere or a triangle and have that be um, whatever is in my brush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use dynamic subdivision and I'm going to turn smoothness down and I'm going to turn on micro poly and we're going to use something in here. Maybe we'll use this guy. I hit apply and now I have now I just turn that simple plane into whatever this thing is right or what I could do is just say you know I want this piece and then I can now use that as my insert mesh right so it's 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 about like how do you how do you create your your actual insert mesh piece so it's not that's not the one I want let's see if there's something more interesting Maybe not there. Why don't we instead, why don't we look at, nope, not these. Let's look at brush and then let's look at clothing. See what's in here. So maybe I can just jack something from in here. That'd be kind of cool. Okay, maybe not that one. Uh, what about army one? Uh, primitives. Give me something. What does this one have? So if you have a multi-part uh, brush, you can either look here, or if you hit M, um, as in Mary, there's different things in 
here too, so it'll pull up your full list in here. That one's kind of interesting. Let's just let's just try this one. So basically I just want that piece, right? So now I can delete, let's do delete hidden. Right, so then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an insert mesh, I'm gonna hit new. Right, and that's gonna create a new insert mesh with just this piece. Um, it also depends on your orientation when you do it, when you create it. So let's, let's actually create a new one there. Okay, there we go. So now, if I just take this one and say, let's just grab this guy. All right, so, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so I'm on my new brush. We go to stroke and we turn on curve mode. Right, so now as curve mode, now I have this. Oh, now you're starting to think what I'm thinking, huh? So I'm creating a necklace basically. So what I wanna do is I should be able to vary up what gets instance in here by what's in my actual brush. So if I plan ahead and I say, okay, you know, maybe, maybe you want some, some, uh, some spheres in there too. So let's go back to my sub tool, this one. Let's get back to my plane real quick. The reason why I'm using a plane is because uh, I want them to be all generally the same size. So if I do, let's go brush, insert, where was that? Mm, let's just do insert primitive here. And we'll do this dude. All right, so I want a sphere. Cool. So we do delete hidden. Then I go back to my insert brush that I created which is this one. And then I do create insert mesh again, and then I do append. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so now I have more pieces in here. So now, technically, I should be able to combine the two, right? So if I go to, and I'm really hoping this works, because I haven't done it before. And now I'm live with people watching. So if I go to variations, Variation style, I think, is one. Come on, baby. Do the thing. Okay. So, in multi-mesh select, right? So this, this slider is how many things that you have here, right? So you can say, oh, I want this to be one. So that will be uh, this one, so the zero and one, right? So multi-mesh selector, uh, that's the cycle through meshes, well, insert mesh, that's the one that I want. So variations will turn down, and let's do one. Okay, two, Come on, baby, do the thing. The trails line intensity should be. Hmm. Uh, let's see, just cycle. 
through. Okay, that's cycling it through. You guys know how to do this? Project strength variations. Variation selector. Ha ha! There we go. That's not working. Come on, baby. Okay. But I want that to be on the line. Oh, you know why? Okay, so when I did the insert multi mesh brush, um, they were s offset on that line. So if we just do zero as embed, I think I may have to recapture them. But you're starting to get the idea, right? So this is one of the ways can we do Hmm. Okay, well, this may be a failed experiment. <laughs> but that's the beauty of watching stuff live. Okay, so let's try to... Um, so let's go all the way back. So we'll go here. Um, so we'll go brush, insert, grab my insert brush. Right, we got this polysphere. That's fine. So I think what was happening is because um, now it should just be. Do delete hidden. Yeah, I don't know why. It's being weird. So maybe what I'll do instead is um, we'll do the try part, right? So I'll just set. What I'll do is I'll set the variation myself. I'll just do it myself. Okay, so maybe I want. So if, uh, the other cool thing is if you want to offset exactly, right? So if you hold down Alt and Control and pull this off, it'll dupe it, right? And I'm still holding my pen down. And if I let go of the keyboard, then it will do automatic adjustment. Or like the, the distance between will be um, duplicated. Everybody asleep still? Okay, and then what I'll do is I'm going to grab, I'm going to go grab back to this guy real quick. We're going to duplicate him because I want to keep that. All right, and then I'll come back here. Cool, so now I got this guy as well. And what I want to do is I want to do brush insert, and we're going to go back and find that modeling kit. And that one, okay. Okay, cool, that's the one I want. So we'll do delete hidden. Okay, then we'll go back to this guy and we'll do merge down. That's fine. Switch that. We're going to move this guy. Let's see if this is going to work. 
then maybe what we'll do is check this out. All right, so we're gonna go, we're gonna move this guy here like that. I'm gonna clear that because this is all one. Now let's dupe this. Let's dupe this. Okay, we'll do auto groups. Gonna get rid of this guy. We'll do delete hidden. Okay. We'll pull this guy in here like that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is yeah, we'll take okay, that's that one, and that is You guys still with me? <laughs> it is. You just you just you just watch though. Just watch. You have to be patient, man. Okay. Grab this guy. We dupe him off like that. There we go. And then we dupe that guy off. Down there. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this guy as group masked. And then I'm going to use all this as my internal. It's going to save, and then we'll do our last step. So this piece will be one, all of this will be two, and then this will be the third. So do group mast. Okay, cool. There's my tripart brush. All right, maybe what I'll do real quick is, let's append in a cylinder. Let's grab that cylinder. Right, you know what, let's just see if that works first. Okay, so, yeah, if this doesn't work, I'd be really upset. <laughs> uh, insert multi-mesh. And crash, watch this. The payoff will be the crash. Ready for it? Yeah, that didn't work. They did insert mesh for everything. Look at that. That's not what I wanted. That's weird. Let's just do new. That's what I wanted, actually. Not an insert multi mesh, just an insert mesh brush. Okay. Now I should be able to say in this brush, this guy here. Uh, we go down to stroke. We turn on curve mode. Ha 
Aha. Okay, so then uh, curve mode is working. Then we go to brush modifiers. We'll do well. No, we'll probably stretch. That's what I want. Curve resolution is up. There we go. So now it's giving me. Right, so if I really want to, now I can go, let's turn off all that stuff down here. You get the idea though. So let's say I wanna go, this usually takes a couple of times to do. All right, you can see now the basic idea. All right, so let's go back to. So you can, you can create a couple of different versions of this too, right? So if you want to just create like a Mr. T style, um, you can go really easily and just go in and create different versions of that. Okay, stretch. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I don't want to weld points. I want this to be up a little bit. And then in stroke. Curve step, I think it's lower. There we go. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha <laughs> ha. See, stick with me. Right, so now you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. You get the idea. <laughs> it's not really working out right now. Curve step. I don't want to do weld points. Curve resolution. That's the triparts part. Maybe triparts is supposed to be off. There we go. That's why. Cool. So now I can do all kind of fun stuff like with that. So. Maybe I actually want to do different, different hang bits. Could do that, which is kind of cool. Uh, see, uh, see. All right, uh, let's see, what else are we going to work on? Oh, let's see if we can delete this guy. All right, uh, give me one second, guys. Uh, we're going to do a quick five-minute break stretch for a moment uh potty break bio brb and uh we will be back momentarily give some p break stretch break be back in a moment
All right, that was a quick stretch break. Quick one. Everybody still here? All right, I think what we're going to do is um, we're going to start working on the shoes a little bit. These um, mad bama jammas here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up some reference. You guys can still hear me, right? That's good. Grab my reference real quick. Yes, okay, good. So something like this is kind of what I'm going for for these guys. Um, so we're gonna do maybe we'll use some dynamics real quick. So we'll we'll bust out the geo right for this little piece, and then maybe we'll use um, some of the cloth dynamics to see if we can get some of these little crunch, uh, and then we'll start kind of going in and and blocking out the main forms here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Echo. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is let's just take this this piece, right? And we'll use this as our um, piece to block from, right? So we'll just grab not that one. We'll use the brush. Actually, you know what? We'll use mask. Yes, that's fine. So we're just going to grab that, don't need that, want to come down here like so, <laughs> I don't want that brush, get out of here. Okay, uh, so the question is do we want to grab the little piece that goes underneath and I think yes at this point, let's just grab. We don't want to because uh, we're going to use uh, some of the dynamics to see if we can get some of the fold logic in there real quick we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna try it out live and we're just gonna see how it goes because we're all just hanging out anyways <laughs> what could go wrong I mean honestly Nothing can go wrong, right? Everything goes, um... Is there an echo? Check, check, check. All right, is that better, or is there still echo? Is there still an echo? Is there still an echo? I th think that should have fixed it. Let me know if it did not, and we'll keep we'll keep rolling. Sorry about the echo. No echo there. Uh, that's on Twitch and no echo on YouTube. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep rolling. Okay, bud. Um, so let's look at our polys. Okay, we'll do a quick apply poly. That's fine. Okay, we'll do split hidden. Okay, we'll undo that, 
And then now we've got our geo, which is in the right place. We'll do just a quick polish by groups. Cool. Go to geo. Zero mesh. We'll do half. I like half. Half is good. Do a quick. Okay, cool. Half. Half. That should be about enough. Okay, so I want to inflate it a little bit, so I'm going to use my Z modeler brush trick. So I'm just going to Q mesh, polygroup all, and then I'm going to hold down shift. So it doesn't give me any extra geo, it just expands it across each um, polynormal. Cool. Now let's see what that gives us. Okay, so let's go to dynamic subdivision real quick. We'll turn on dynamic. I'm going to give it a little bit of a thickness. Turn that down to one. Okay. Let's see what that gives us. Basically, we're looking for some free starting folds. Okay. Let's see what it does. Let's just push the button, see what it does. Okay. All right, let's recalc. Um, so firmness is there. Cool, let's try that. Okay, why is it doing that? That's a good question. Okay, let's, um, I think there's some weird things going on there, so let's turn off su dynamic subdivision. And then let's do Z or mesh real quick, and let's do it by the same. Try the other algorithm, see what that does. Okay, sometimes I find that if it doesn't really do, Z or mesh doesn't really do what you want it to do, um, I find if you just kind of move some stuff around a little bit and then do zero mesh it again, it will change. Not necessarily for the better, but we'll see. That might be a little bit better. Okay. So let's go back to dynamic subdivision. Okay. All right, now let's see what that does. See if it gives us the same issue. Okay, it does. What is it doing? Um, gravity. Okay. Maybe it's the firmness that is. Oh, not that. Did you ask him politely to do the job? <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't. You're right. <laughs> Gravity strength. Let's try that. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's too close to this thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what's the difference between zebra mesh and dyna mesh? Uh, dyna mesh will give you um, here, like. So Z remesh will try to do this style of remesh for you, where Dynamesh doesn't care if there's nice edge loops and stuff. It just gives you enough geo so that you can create different things. So like if you look at this piece, right? So this, you see how like the, the geo is just, it doesn't really care what the edge flow is. It's just trying to give you more geo. So like when you, move something out here and redynamesh it, it will now give you this, um, let's try this one. I have something hidden on that one.
So Dynamesh is really for, you know, oh, I want to do something like this, where you want to change it uh, quite a bit. And when you do Dynamesh, it basically says, okay, I'm going to take and give you just about the same amount of Geo based on everything. Where Zero Mesh will try to give you nice, clean Geo kind of all over the place. All right, uh, I think maybe what's happening is it's trying... There may be two things happening. One, let's make sure that it's on the outside of this geo. So we'll do that. Okay, that's fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this guy. And that guy. So we'll turn those off, which means that they won't calculate in the um, in the collision volume. So let's recalculate the collision volume, which means that it doesn't have that piece back there. So what I'm thinking it was doing is maybe it was trying to catch that piece back there. So now let's turn that back on and run simulation. Nope, still doing it. It's interesting. Okay, figure out why. There's something happening. Something happening. Let's turn that off. Let's do... Maybe we'll just give it the actual geo instead of using Dynamesh um, or uh, sub dynamic subdivision. Let's try to actually give it its own geo and then run. Nope. Okay, that's not it. Um, so inflate. Something weird's going on. Okay, well. Okay, let's turn that off. I'm wondering if we divide this, right? Maybe there was some closed hole, some holes that were in it? Nope. Okay. Okay, it's got clean geo. Hmm. This is a strange one. Okay, let's look. Gravity strength. So maybe what we can do instead is put, turn gravity off and then we do contract uh, out of the Z, so X and Y. What does that give us? Nothing. Oh, it's because I've got to turn that on. Okay. There's something that is trying to grab it back there, which I don't know why. Okay, let's, oh, you know what it is? Ha <laughs> ha, I bet you I know what it is. Um, I think the body, let's turn the body off for now. Okay, so this piece, let's make sure that there's there's something hidden there. So let's, let's turn that on. Okay. Let's see if this piece has anything hidden. Nope. Okay. Now let's, so the body's off. So if we recalculate again to do the collision volume. Okay. Now it's giving us something else, which is the wrong mesh. <laughs> so let's do this one. Ah, same thing. Inflate resolution. Maybe it's self collision. Let's try giving self collision. Nope. Hmm. 
Is it masked? Yeah, no mask. Let's see. Let's check this guy. Right, there's there's a mask on that one. I don't think it matters. There's nothing hidden. Delete hidden. There's nothing there. Okay. Um, let's see this one. So that was masked, but it shouldn't matter. Okay, let's grab this one. There is no mask. Is the XZ contract? Let's try that. Let me just recalculate real quick. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, let's try this one. Just to see. Uh, hold on one second. I close the door. That's the beauty of watching live. Beauty of watching live. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to grab a new one. Maybe it's just that mesh. Sometimes I've, I've run into the an issue where it's it's just the mesh just does not want to oops not delete hidden I want to split hidden okay there we go you hear my daughter's having fun out there dad where are you come hang out with us um, let's do half 20 by 20 Zero mesh. Okay, let's just see if that one will work. So let's do dynamic subdivision. Let's turn on some thickness. Turn this down to one. One. There we go. So let's do point zero one. Okay, so this one, that should work against that. Okay, so let's do, let's turn off contract, let's just do gravity to see if it works. Inflate was down. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? All right, so recalculate one more time. Okay, that one's working. Nope, has the same problem. Look at that. I bet you there's something. There's something. There's something behind it. I think. All right, because the simulation was running fine up there. Hmm. Let's turn that guy off. Let's just turn all this stuff off. Let's turn all that off. Okay. So now let's recalculate. Now if all those are off, if all those are off, it shouldn't calculate anything that has your eyeball off. Okay. So we could uh, gravity. Uh, I think it's not doing anything now. Hey, it's working. Okay. Let's try this one then. Haha! It's technically working. I think it was something. I bet you it was something that was hidden in those rocks. That's probably what it was. Okay. So now, let's turn that off. 
Let's undo that. Let's turn that off. Let's give it some more geo. So dynamic subdivision. Maybe we'll give it two subdivisions. And two there. Okay. Yeah, and, I mean, I think any Dynamics uh, engine can be a little wonk sometimes. I think if it it has uh, certain usage cases. Okay. At least it's working now. Okay, cool. That's what that's what I want. So now instead, uh, let's do contract. Run some engine. Okay. I think it's X and Y that I want. There we go. No. Z goes okay. So inflate is zero. Resolution I think is okay. I think we could turn the resolution up a little bit. Yeah, I mean it's. I don't know uh, about you guys, but I've lost many hours and many days in Marvelous Designer, <laughs> even with all their. Um, let's turn the. Turn that up. We'll do. Iterations. See if we can get something a little bit decent here, and then um, I think we got to call it for the day. So f oh, it's our firmness that we got to turn down. Okay, so we got iterations. Okay, now it's doing the right thing. We just wanted to do it correctly. So maybe the amount. Yeah, the transpose cloth uh, was was my next. Let's see what I can get out of the um, the run simulation. But I think I think you're you're right. So if we use uh, brush. I think it's what is it? Uh, cloth nudge, cloth move. All right, we can start getting this kind of stuff. I have to play with it a little bit more. Oh, you know what we do on brushed? I think is is what you, what you want. So this this could get you there too. At least get you a start, you know. Yeah, it's really cool is, um, you know, what we were showing earlier with the with the collision um, and just kind of getting it draped over something. The other really awesome one is, is just um, just using these these cloth brushes and just saying, oh, I want it, you know, pressed against the top of this foot. You're like, boom. OK, there you go. <laughs> super simple and super easy.
Oh, it's, it's awesome, creature. All right, you start at least, you know what, uh, it, you know, it may not get you all the things that you want, but if you use it in the right way, it can get you some of the the first, um, you know, the first shapes that you really want to hit. What's cool then is you can say, all right, well, let's do allow shrink. That's what I want. Okay. Then maybe what we'll do is we'll mask off this area because I don't want to push down any further. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I've been using it forever and I'm still getting better every day. At least you can get the beginnings of some stuff, you know? And then, like, maybe... Maybe if you're fine from there. You know, you can... Um, you can just sculpt normally on top of it. You know, that doesn't look that good, but... You get the idea. All right, I, th I think that's probably going to be it for me today. I need to get back to um, hanging out with the family, so let's see where we were at. That's that. Let's get our background. That guy. Um, hoping that it's never hitting a button and done. It will, dude, honestly, it will never be hitting a button and done. Thank you, guys. It, on, it'll, it'll never be hitting a button, hit a button and done. Um, there's always some kind of, um, artist interaction that needs to happen. Um, interpretation of things that don't exist, um, all kinds of things that, you know, it'll, it'll never happen. There we go. There you get a little bit better view of something that we've done. <laughs> but now we can start kind of bringing some details down into uh, this this area. So, you know, we've got a lot of high detail kind of up in here. Um, the idea is to kind of get you to draw your eye down this way, and then now we can have some some nice stuff down here. Uh, you know, it's about it's about the presentation, right? So in in this particular one, I'm I'm kind of going more towards a render um, for how I'm setting it up. If it was just a production model, obviously it wouldn't be sitting and posed. Uh, but this is definitely something a little bit more along the lines of uh, working towards a pose or a render. Um, and some of the things that I like doing is is just making sure that I have um, kind of just nice overall flow design of where your eye hits, right? So we got cool stuff, you know, this drops your eye down. Okay, this is all cool. That's so it brings it down. All of this, um, all these lines kind of bring you this way. Now we've got some details kind of coming in down here. Oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. And then now this kind of brings you back up. Leg brings you back up. So it's kind of like this uh, circular, circular movement that I'm tr that I'm trying to keep in mind um, for the the overall presentation. So. Yeah, that was fun. That was, uh, for game, do you start with a T or A? I usually do T A pose. Uh, the problem with T pose is that um, when you have your arms out here like this, your deltoids are usually too, um, it, are not relaxed enough. So A pose, they're a little bit more relaxed and kind of a neutral neutral position. 
Uh, the only thing you really have to worry about is your underarm, underarm pits. Um, but it's better to have your deltoids in a, like a more relaxed uh, position overall than worry about your pits. So. Yeah. All right. I think that's it for today. Um, if you would like to go back and, and see how I did some of this uh, earlier stuff, you can go to um, zbrushlive.com and you can find my artist page, Brennan Isaiah Bankston. And I've got all the previous stuff um, for this, plus a lot more. <laughs> There's so many projects that I've worked on. I think like three now. <laughs> But uh, yeah, there's also a bunch of other artists on there uh, that are absolutely amazing and do other stuff that I do, don't do. So check them out and um, hope you guys had fun. Hope you guys learned a couple things. But most of all, I hope you were inspired to go make your own stuff. So do it. Get out there, have fun, be good and make awesome. I kind of like that. Have fun, be good, do awesome. I'm going to have to write that down. <laughs> All right, guys. Enjoy your weekend. See you next time.